Centuries ago, books were almost wiped out entirely with the fall of the Roman Empire at the hands of the barbarians, according to Britannica. Seeking to safeguard the future of the written word, monasteries became the central hub for ink and paper. Libraries blossomed in convents and monasteries, and monks passed the time by writing and copying new books to bolster those libraries. Perhaps you'd think that putting the clergy in charge of being scribes and of the safekeeping of books would lead to some one-dimensional manuscripts. But you'd be wrong. Here are some of the strangest things found in medieval manuscripts, in the margins or otherwise. Knights fighting snails Knights were something like celebrities during the Middle Ages. They were the rich, landed gentry, the warrior class and the overseers of protection, all rolled into one. So needless to say, they fought a great many things, from rival knights to villains, to dragons and monsters. But apparently, they had another common foe as well, a foe that most probably wouldn't imagine a knight fighting. Throughout the margins of 13th and 14th century manuscripts, knights can be found engaged in combat against snails of all types and sizes. Sometimes they are jousting snails, other times wielding swords and shields, fleeing across the page. Medievalists at the British Library highlight just how typical this marginalia is, and posit some theories as to why it's so prevalent on the page. One leading theory is that it depicts the struggle of the poor and the fight against the aristocracy. Other theories include the representation of the saucy sexuality of women, the resurrection of Christ, the annoyance of garden snails, or the inevitability of death. Meanwhile, Lillian Randall proposed a political theory in her article, The Snail in Gothic Marginal Warfare. According to Randall, the snail represented the Lombards, a group widely despised at the time for various unsavory characteristics. An example of this would be based on a report in the 13th century that criticizes them for such grievances as failing to wash their hands before meals and of boorishness for speaking out of turn. Killer Bunnies whether they were wielding axes, bows and arrows, swords or lances, the bunnies found in medieval marginalia are ready for battle. And they look really happy too. Like they have been waiting all their life to chop off some heads. You'll see them engaged in all sorts of awful crimes and cruelties, like decapitating bound humans and hanging dogs from trees. It truly is a cruel and unusual death by rabbits. As with just about all marginalia, there is a reason why these rabbits are up to unrabbit like shenanigans. And it isn't just an arbitrary choice. According to Daily Art, rabbits during the Middle Ages were seen as symbols of purity and helplessness, which is why medieval marginalia artists turned them into sadistic, cruel killers. This world in the margins has meant to be a sort of inverse world to what people would be used to. Naturally, it's impossible not to think of the killer rabbit scene of Monty Python and the Holy Grail fame. As it turns out, there was quite a bit of medieval lore buried in the depths of the comedy trope. Book Curses Making books in the Middle Ages was a lot different compared to our modern times. Nowadays, millions of books are printed any given year. But back then, it was a job to build a book. A single book could take years for one monk to write. According to Atlas Obscura, with the fanciful letters, the detailed illustrations and the cartoonish marginalia. Atlas Obscura quotes one medieval scribe who spoke poorly of the process. And it goes, It extinguishes the light from the eyes. It bends the back. It crushes the viscera and the ribs. It brings forth pain to the kidneys and weariness to the whole body. Given the sheer time and labor commitment, it's understandable that the scribes would be protective of their work, which probably leads them to write curses on the front and back of their books. Two examples, both from Mark Drogan's book, Anathema, Medieval Scribes and the History of Book Curses, gives a feel for what book thieves could be facing. One curse, short, 
sweet and rhyming, went like this. May the sword of Anathema slay, if anyone steals this book away. Another curse goes like this. If anyone takes away this book, let him die to death. Let him be fried in a pan. Let the falling sickness and fever size him. Let him be broken on the wheel and hanged. Amen. Conveniently for the scribes, this was at the time when people believed in such curses, meaning that as long as they could read, they would have been deterred. We've reached the end of today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. What related topic would you like us to cover next? Leave a comment down below. We'd love to know. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one.